raspberry tart couldn't fall asleep. Tomorrow was her birthday, a day that might be the best of the whole year. Raspberry Tart thought about last year, what fun it had been to plan her party with the rest of the kids, and the presents. There had even been a special treat, a new bicycle. But this year, nobody had mentioned a party, and it looked like no one would remember her birthday. She felt sad. What if everyone in Strawberry Land, including Strawberry Shortcake, had forgotten that tomorrow was Raspberry's special day? Raspberry Tart tossed and turned, but she finally fell asleep. Raspberry dreamed a wonderful dream about a big birthday party. All her friends were there. Blueberry Muffin, Orange Blossom, Angel Cake, Lemon Meringue, and of course, Strawberry Shortcake. They had all come to her party, and they had even brought their pets. Everyone gave her a present, and streamers and laughter swirled everywhere. But in the morning, when Raspberry Tart woke up, her house was very quiet. Raspberry hummed a special cheer-up song she knew, but nobody came to wish her a happy birthday. Well, Raspberry finally said out loud, if no one will come to visit me, I will just have to go to visit them. Raspberry Tart dialed Blueberry Muffin's number. Hello, Blueberry, she said. Can I play with you and Cheesecake today? I can't play today, answered Blueberry Muffin. I have pies to bake. Raspberry Tart next called on Orange Blossom. Hello, Orange Blossom, she said. Could you meet me at the park today? Orange Blossom answered. I'd like to, but I can't. I have to finish painting an important picture by three o'clock. If I go out to play, my painting won't get done. Oh, all right then, Raspberry answered in a sharp voice. I'm sure that I can find someone who isn't so very busy to play with me. And she quickly hung up. Raspberry Tart knew that sometimes you have better luck just going to a friend's house instead of phoning first. So she put on her hat and walked out the front door. Rhubarb went with her. They walked down the road until they came to Angel Cake's house. Raspberry Tart knocked, and Angel Cake came to the door. Would you like to come to the park with us? Raspberry asked. Oh, thank you very much, but I just can't today. Raspberry Tart was very disappointed. Who cares about that little angel cake anyway, she thought. I'll find someone better to play with. With rhubarb at her side, Raspberry went straight to Lemon Meringue's house. She called to her from the front walk. Would you like to play with us in the park? I would like to, but I must wash my hair so that it will look pretty at the special party I am going to. Maybe I can play tomorrow. It isn't fair, Raspberry said to Rhubarb. Why should Lemon get to go to a party when it's my birthday? I'm the one who should be going to a party. Oh, why didn't anyone remember? She thought she would try one more place, but when she got to Huckleberry Pie's house, there was a big sign on the door. Gone fishing with strawberry shortcake. Raspberry Tart sat down on Huckleberry Pie's front porch and began to cry. As she cried, she thought to herself, I will always remember how everybody forgot my birthday. They will be sorry that they were so mean to me. Raspberry Tart turned to Rhubarb Monkey and spoke in a firm voice. You and I, we're going to have our own party in the park. We'll make a mud pie and seed cake. We will not invite the other kids, but we will ask some birds to share it with us. The birds can sing happy birthday, then we can climb some trees and look at their babies. Rhubarb smiled and clapped his hands and off they went. Raspberry Tart and Rhubarb Monkey had their party with the birds. Then they went to find a good tree to climb. Rhubarb Monkey climbed quickly and easily. When he spotted a pretty nest with two baby birds in it, he motioned to Raspberry Tart. There are two babies in this nest. Come and see them. 
raspberry tart started up the tree, but she did not get very far. When she was only a few feet from the ground, she lost her footing and fell with a thump. Although she was not hurt, Raspberry wanted to leave the park. She had had enough tree climbing. Everything seemed to be going wrong today. As Raspberry and Rhubarb walked home, they passed a store. Rhubarb announced Raspberry Tart. I know that nobody else is going to give me a present, so I will give myself one. It will cheer me up. Raspberry Tart looked at pretty necklaces and pins. Finally, she chose a seashell bracelet. All the way home, Raspberry Tart looked at her beautiful new bracelet. She was pleased with it. It did make her feel a little better. This has been a long, long day, said Raspberry as they came to her house. I think that I will go to my room and take a little nap. As she walked up to her front door, it opened slowly. There stood Strawberry Shortcake with a big smile and a bunch of flowers. Happy birthday, she sang. When Raspberry Tart walked inside, it was an even bigger surprise. All her friends were in the living room, and in the corner was a heap of presents. What a lucky girl I am, thought Raspberry Tart. I thought that everyone had forgotten me, but now I see that they were really trying to surprise me. Friends don't usually forget each other's special days. Strawberry Shortcake took charge. She called everyone to the table. It was time for the birthday cake. After everyone sang happy birthday, Raspberry Tart blew out the candles. Raspberry Tart opened all her presents. Then the kids all hunted for peanuts. They pinned the tail on the donkey. They had a balloon blowing contest. Finally, Strawberry Shortcake said, I have a poem for you. Here it is. A day that's special, just for you. Your birthday is here, and we are too. Together we sing, together we play, together we celebrate your special day. When the party was over, Raspberry Tart stood at the door and waved goodbye to most of her friends. The day was almost over, but there was one more special treat. For Strawberry Shortcake had decided to sleep over that night. As she snuggled under her blankets, Raspberry Tart thought about her day. She smiled and felt like the happiest girl in Strawberry Land. Happy birthday, Raspberry Tart, and good night. Shortcake sat down next to Custard and looked at her neat and tidy strawberry patch. She had just finished weeding and watering every single berry plant. They now stood clean and clear, nodding in the golden sunlight. Strawberry was pleased that she had finished so quickly and decided to do something special with the rest of her day. Custard, she said, I have a wonderful idea. Let's fill a basket with some strawberries. Then we'll invite all our friends for a picnic lunch in the woods. While we're there, we can pick some pretty wildflowers for our supper table. Won't that be fun? While Strawberry filled the basket, Custard frolicked about. Her wavy tail sometimes twined about the picnic basket, and once it almost spilled the berries. Now we're ready, said Strawberry, as she laid a clean white napkin on top of the berries, and off they went. The first stop was just across the valley, at the big house with the flaky blue shutters. Strawberry marched up and tapped on the slightly topsy-turvy door. 
Her friend and closest neighbor, Huckleberry Pie, opened it. Strawberry saw that he had dripping wet hands. His dog, Pupcake, stood at his side, wagging his striped tail back and forth. Well, 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 he said. Hello, Strawberry. I was just splashing some water on my huckleberries to keep them fresh. And splashing yourself, too, thought Strawberry. But she didn't say so to him. Huckleberry really tried hard and meant well, even if he was a bit messy. I'm going off to the forest for a picnic lunch, Huckleberry. Would you like to come with me? She asked. Oh, gee, Strawberry, I was just getting ready to go fishing with Pupcake down at the Strawberry Soda Stream. I hear the candy trout are jumping. Maybe next time. It was the same story at every house. Everyone had something else to do. Raspberry Tart had slept late and had too many chores left. So much to do, said Raspberry, that I can't just go off whenever I want. Besides, Rhubarb is being naughty. Rhubarb, she called. You come right down off that roof. Even Blueberry Muffin couldn't come. Today is my baking day, she explained. Even when the sun shines, I have to get my blueberry goodies into the oven. Her pet mouse cheesecake licked the crumbs off her face and nodded her head. Well, said Strawberry Shortcake to Custard as they headed down the lane, we'll just go by ourselves. But let's fill the basket so full of wildflowers that we can give some to everyone when we get back. That will be a nice surprise for them. In no time at all, they arrived at a clearing deep in the woods. Strawberry nibbled on some of the sweet, juicy berries and gave Custard a little cup of milk, which he had brought along. Then she looked around. There were starchy white daisies swaying gently in the breeze. Clusters of lemon-yellow buttercups opened their petals in a cheerful greeting. Tiny bluebells peeked out from behind lacy ferns. While Custard chased after a fluttering butterfly, Strawberry filled her basket to the top with the most beautiful flowers. After so much work, both Strawberry and Custard were quite tired. I'll just close my eyes for a short nap, said Strawberry, and then we'll go home. They lay down at the edge of the clearing on a soft bed of pine needles. Strawberry used a clump of velvet green moss as a pillow and soon fell fast asleep. A cool breeze tickling her chin told Strawberry it was time to wake up. And sure enough, the sun had disappeared somewhere behind the trees. Right over there. Or was it there? She just wasn't sure. From far off, Strawberry heard the hoot hoot of an owl. She knew it was time to be on their way. Custard padded along the stony path as they set off in one direction. Before long, they came to a great big hill. Strawberry knew they had never seen it before. Oh dear, this must be the wrong way. We'd better turn around, she said. They trudged on as it grew darker and darker. Twisting vines seemed to reach out to trip them. Jagged rocks and fallen logs seemed to grow up right in the middle of their way. Suddenly, there was a gigantic lake in front of them. It was so big, they couldn't even see the other side. Strawberry began to get a little scared, but she knew she had to be brave for Custard. We can cross here, Custard. We'll just have to keep trying until we find a path that leads us home. Here she said as she leaned down to pick him up. You seem so tired. I'll carry you for a while. Even though she was weary herself, Strawberry marched forward through the deep, dark woods. As she walked, she began to think that they were really lost. Just then, she heard a buzzing near her ear. 
Through the dim light, she could just make out the tiny speckled body and wings of Lucky Bug hovering right in front of her. Lucky Bug, how glad I am to see you. Did you come out to join us? You know you're always welcome. But it's so dark now. Do you think you could show us the way home? Strawberry asked. Lucky Bug buzzed happily, circled round, and then flew off. Suddenly ahead on the path, there were hundreds of sparkling dots of light. And in the center was Lucky Bug. She had gathered her friends, the fireflies, to form a big ball of light. Custard jumped down and gaily trotted after them, and Strawberry skipped merrily behind. They followed the dancing light through the dark trees and bushes, and soon came to the edge of the forest. There in the distance, with the moonlight now shining down, was Strawberry's own strawberry patch and cozy home. I can hardly wait to get there so we can have our supper, said Strawberry Shortcake as she waved goodbye to the friendly fireflies. And in a twinkling, she was home. She opened the door, and what a surprise! Seated at the table were huckleberry pie, raspberry tart, and blueberry muffin with plates of candy trout, crisp tarts, and hot crumbly muffins set out in front of them. We thought a supper all together would be fun, said Raspberry Tart. Custard ran to join Pupcake, Rhubarb, and Cheesecake playing in front of the fireplace as Strawberry rushed forward to greet her friends. Wherever have you been so long? We've been waiting for you. Has anything happened? Asked Blueberry Muffin. Oh, nothing much, laughed Strawberry Shortcake. I went into the forest to pick some wildflowers and ended up finding some new friends and one special old friend as well. With a happy buzzing near her ear, Strawberry Shortcake then sat down to celebrate her return. She gave a flower to everyone, ate some of the good things on the table, and then finished up with a glass of milk and a big bowl of her favorite fruit, bright red delicious strawberries. This has been a very exciting day, said Strawberry. But being with all my friends is the very best part of all. summer in Strawberry Land, and it looked as if the berry crops were going to be the biggest ever. Strawberry Shortcake had just brought in her first harvest of strawberries, and the other kids had all come over to see them. They are phenomenal, lisped Apricot, who liked big words. Why, they're almost as big as Tea Time Turtle, Blueberry Muffin said with a laugh. I have decided that we should celebrate our first harvest of the summer, Strawberry announced. Tomorrow, we are going to have a hot air balloon race. Everybody began to talk at once. Strawberry Shortcake always came up with the best ideas. We'll take turns. Some of us can go up in the air, and the rest will follow on their bicycles. Every balloon will have a basket of my strawberries to eat as we float out over Strawberry Land. What a wonderful idea, said Lime Chiffon. A strawberry festival high in the sky. Huckleberry yawned. I'll stay behind to guard the crops. That means I don't have to move. Everybody laughed. All that wind will mess up my hair, said Lemon Meringue, straightening her dress. cried Cherry Cuddler. She was always ready to try anything. Soon it was settled between them who would go and who would stay. 
everybody went home to get ready for the trip. Very early the next morning, the kids met on the open field behind Strawberry Shortcake's house. The big colored balloons were already waiting for them, their bright banners waving in the breeze. Now listen, everybody, said Strawberry. You must pull on the green cord to go higher and the red one to come down. Let's climb aboard and practice it once while we're still on the ground. Strawberry took apple dumpling and angel cake in her basket. Plum pudding, keep an eye on Cherry Cutler. Somebody's got to watch her every minute. Raspberry tart and butter cookie climbed into the basket attached to the big green balloon. Lemon meringue, are you sure you don't want to come? Raspberry teased. The wind couldn't mess up your hair more than it already has. Lemon turned her back and pretended not to hear. Is everybody ready? Strawberry called. Let them loose. The rest of the kids untied the ropes. The great balloons lifted slowly off the ground and floated away on a light west wind. Get your bicycles, everybody said Lemon Meringue. We'll take the road by the river. Soon only Huckleberry Pie and his dog Pupcake stood in the field. Let's go, Pupcake. We'd better guard those juicy berries. But Pupcake had a better idea. He took Huckleberry's pant leg between his teeth and started pulling him towards the river. I know you want to go fishing, old boy, but we're supposed to be guarding the berry crops. Pupcake barked twice. All right, we'll sneak down to the river just for a little while. It's so early, I bet the berry birds aren't even up yet. But Huckleberry was wrong. In his castle on Porcupine Peak, the purple pie man had been up since dawn watching the kids. When he saw the balloon floating away down the valley, the pie man shrieked for Captain Cackle, the leader of the berry birds. Time to go, Crackle. Take the others and bring me all those juicy berries. With one flap of their purple wings, the berry birds rose from their perches and headed down the mountain straight for the kids' berry bushes. Everything looks so tiny down below, Strawberry Shortcake cried. She lifted up Apple Dumpling so the little baby could see over the edge. Where are we now, Plum Pudding? Down near Sugar Cane Creek, she called back. But the winds have already shifted. We're going to be blown right home again. Suddenly, Gooseberry humped. Quick, Plum, catch Cherry, cried Strawberry. Plum Pudding grabbed Cherry Cuddler just before she reached the top edge of the basket. The kids are following us back, cried Raspberry Tart. See, they're starting to turn around. Watch out, Raspberry! You're too close to those trees, cried Strawberry. Pull on your green cord! Raspberry yanked the green cord and the balloon bounced up and down as it skimmed over the top branches of two pine trees. I knew those trees were there, for goodness sake, she muttered. Nobody needs to tell me how to fly a balloon. Look, everybody, Blueberry shouted. The berry birds are headed for our crops. The kids will never get back in time and Huckleberry's nowhere in sight, Raspberry wailed. Oh, my beautiful raspberries. I've got an idea, Strawberry said. Pull on your red cords so the balloons will drop down as close as possible. Then we'll throw my strawberries at those nasty birds and knock them right off their branches. Great idea, said Plum Pudding. Your strawberries are big enough to knock even the purple pie man out of a tree. And I bet he's the one behind all this. The kids pulled on their red cords and silently the great balloons floated down. The berry birds were so busy stealing berries that they never looked up until it was too late. Ah, 
Ouch, cried Captain Crackle as an enormous strawberry hit him smack on the top of his head. One bird fell right out of the bush he was robbing. Another one flew away with a screech. Keep it up, kids. We've got them on the run now, cried Strawberry as the berry birds began to head off in the direction of Porcupine Peak. That'll teach them a lesson, shouted Plum Pudding. Head for the big field and we'll land, Strawberry said. I see the rest of the kids waiting for us. One by one, the balloons dropped gently back to Earth. Everybody helped to tie them down. We saw the berry birds flying away, said Lime Chiffon. They were trying to steal our berries, said Raspberry Tart. We took care of them. Where is that lazy Huckleberry Pie, said Strawberry with a stern look on her face. We saw him as we came up the road by the river, said Lemon Meringue. He's taking a nap. Everybody laughed. Well, he'd better not sleep too long or he'll miss the big party at my house, said Strawberry. Come on, everybody. We'll have a good time. And they did. As Strawberry Shortcake and her little kitten Custard were taking a walk, they saw a large sign. Annual Pie Baking Contest. Bring your entry this afternoon. Prizes for all. Look, Custard, Strawberry said, pointing to the sign. Of course, Custard couldn't read, but she sat in front of the sign, purring. I must make a large strawberry pie to enter in the contest, said Strawberry Shortcake. As they walked back towards home, they met several of their friends. Everyone was excited about the pie baking contest. Guess what kind of pie I'm gonna make? Asked Huckleberry Pie. Everyone laughed. That was such an easy question to answer. I'm gonna bake a pie too, said Raspberry Tart. Her little monkey rhubarb rubbed his stomach with delight. I shall bake a pie too, said Almond Tea, who was standing nearby. Almond Tea was such a fine baker that Strawberry Shortcake didn't think anyone else would have much chance to win the contest. However, it would still be fun to enter. Besides, the sign had said, prizes for all. When they returned home, Strawberry took a basket from her cupboard and went out into her garden to pick some berries. There were so many big, ripe berries growing that she would have enough for as many pies as she wanted. As she picked, Strawberry Shortcake thought about the contest. She wondered how she could make a fruit pie that would be different. While she carefully walked up and down the rows, selecting only the largest and juiciest strawberries, Custard ran about through the plants. Strawberry Shortcake looked up to see Lucky Bug flying overhead. Good morning, Lucky Bug, she called to her tiny friend. You slept very late this morning. I'm picking berries to make a pie for the pie contest. Custard was feeling very playful and tried to catch the little ladybug. Strawberry stopped her picking to watch them. Custard looked so funny jumping into the air trying to catch Lucky Bug, but no matter how high Custard jumped, Lucky Bug could fly higher. Then Custard lost her balance and fell right into the basket that Strawberry had filled with berries. Oh, you silly kitten, laughed Strawberry Shortcake. Now I will have Custard with my strawberries. As she said the words, Strawberry Shortcake realized that she had discovered what kind of pie to make. Of course, a strawberry custard pie would be even more delicious than a plain strawberry pie. She was delighted with this new plan and bent down to pick more berries. Strawberry Shortcake was so busy picking her berries that she didn't see the purple pie man as he sneaked past her garden. He was angry, for all the kids in Strawberry Land were busy working in their gardens, picking berries for their contest pies. It was impossible for him to steal any berries today, so he could not make a pie for the contest. I will think of a way to spoil this pie-making contest, he said to himself. Why should the kids have all the fun of winning prizes? As soon as Strawberry Shortcake finished picking her berries, she went inside and set to work on her pie. First, she made a fine crust using flour and butter and lined it with strawberries. 
Then she prepared a delicious custard. She mixed fresh eggs and rich milk and sugar in a large bowl. Custard jumped up on the counter to watch. She hoped that Strawberry Shortcake would save a little milk for her to lick up. When the custard was ready, Strawberry poured it over the strawberries in the pie crust and set the pie in the oven to bake. When it was done, she added more strawberries all around the top. They look like bright red jewels against the creamy yellow color of the custard. Oh, custard, said Strawberry. As soon as the pie cools, I will take it to the contest. Custard purred loudly. She was proud to have helped Strawberry think of the idea of a strawberry custard pie. Strawberry Shortcake put her pie on the window ledge to cool. Then she went to change her clothes. She had spilled a little custard on her dress when she was working and she wanted to look as fresh and as lovely as her pie. Custard stayed in the kitchen licking out the bowl. As she licked the rim, she heard a sound. It was the purple pie man standing by the window. The pie man was sniffing the strawberry custard pie. This pie looks too good, he said. I had better fix it a little. Then the purple pie man put his hand into his pocket and pulled out a bottle of Silly Juice. He looked to see if anyone was watching. No one was there except Custard. Well, cat, he said, you can't tell on me. Quickly, he opened the bottle and poured some of the Silly Juice onto the pie. The Silly Juice went right into the Custard and you couldn't see or smell it at all. No one will ever guess what I did said the purple pie man. And whoever eats it will become so silly. <clears throat> he laughed and rushed off. Custard ran into the next room to tell Strawberry what had happened. But though she meowed and meowed, Strawberry Shortcake did not understand at all. You sound just as excited about this contest as I feel, she said to her little kitten. Then very carefully, Strawberry Shortcake lifted her pie from the window ledge and walked with it towards the contest. When she arrived, she could see that there were many wonderful entries to compete with hers. To Strawberry's surprise, the contest judge was Almond Tea. I couldn't enter the contest after all, said Almond Tea, because I was asked to be the judge. That's because you are such a wonderful baker, said Strawberry. Strawberry's heart beat with excitement. Perhaps she would have a chance to win now that Almond Tea wasn't in the contest. Almond tea cut a thin piece from each pie. One way to judge a pie is to see how it slices and how the crust holds together, she explained. Everyone was surprised. The only way they knew to judge a pie was by eating it. Of course, I'll taste the pies too, said Almond tea. But first, I want to examine their appearance. As Almond tea took the slices to the side to look at them, the purple pie man approached. The pie man smiled when he noticed that a slice was missing from the strawberry custard pie. He looked around to see what silly things were being done. He saw nothing. That was most strange. It was impossible to eat a slice of pie with silly juice on it without becoming very silly. He began to wonder if he'd poured the wrong thing on strawberry's pie. He thought that he'd better find out. The purple pie man reached out and cut himself a large piece of the strawberry custard pie. Are you a judge in this contest too? Asked Blueberry Muffin. I am the best pie judge in the world, the purple pie man said as he swallowed a large mouthful of pie. I can judge pies every which way. He shouted as he suddenly stood on his head and grabbed for another slice. Stop, Almond Tea called to him. I need to have a taste of it too. She reached for the pie just as the pie man began to jump up and down and oink like a pig. He knocked her hand and the rest of the strawberry custard pie fell on the ground. Oh, whatever is wrong with that silly pie man, cried Strawberry sadly. Now no one will be able to eat my pie. She was wrong. Even though none of the kids ate it, Custard, Pupcake the dog, Cheesecake the mouse, and Rhubarb the monkey quickly rushed up and began to gobble the pie. Eat up! Eat up! shouted the purple pie man who was waddling like a duck with a bucket on his head. And they did. Then even more strange and silly things began to happen. Custard began to balance on one paw. Cheesecake began to twirl her tail like a lasso. Rhubarb started to dance like a ballerina. And Pupcake tried to climb a tree while he chattered like a monkey. Oh, help! cried the pie man. The silly 
silly juice that I put in the pie is making everything too silly. He and the pets look so funny that while Strawberry Shortcake knew she should be angry with him, she couldn't help but laugh and laugh. Now she didn't even mind that she couldn't win the contest. After a little while, the silly juice wore off and everything calmed down again. Then Almond Tea said, The best looking pie was the strawberry custard baked by Strawberry Shortcake. Even though I didn't taste it, I am awarding her a special blue ribbon. Now everyone else can eat some of all these other wonderful pies, so everyone will be a winner. Everyone was very pleased. Then Strawberry Shortcake said something that made them even happier. She said, Tomorrow, I am going to make several of my special strawberry custard pies, and everyone here is invited to come to a tea party and see that they taste as good as they look. Am I invited too? begged the purple pie man, who was again standing on his head. Do you promise to wait your turn and sit properly at the table and play no tricks at all? asked Strawberry. I promise, I promise, said the purple pie man. I will be very good. Then you may come too, said Strawberry Shortcake. But do you think the purple pie man really kept his promise? Strawberry Shortcake. Meow, said Custard the polka dot kitten. Hello there, beamed the sun. Where are you going? To the pep parade, said Strawberry. Custard won first prize last year, so this year we're going to be the judges. And this beautiful scooter is the first prize. It's very, very pretty, she added. Ah, how I hate berry talk said the purple pie man who was hiding behind a tree spying on Strawberry. It makes me want to scream, but I want that scooter. And you, Captain Cackle, are going to win it for me. Caw! squawked Cackle, captain of the bad berry birds. You may be a bit messy now, said the pie man, but I'll soon make you look terrific from beak to tail. And if my plan works, you're sure to win first prize. A few minutes later, the purple pie man put his evil plan into action. See, Cackle, he said, my pie wagon is full of hidden cages. If I steal all the pets, then you will be the winner. Hehe. <laughs> However, when the purple pie man tried to push the wagon, it was too heavy. He had to put it on the trolley track so it would move more easily. But then wham, the trolley came around the bend. What fool is riding the trolley at this time of day? Yelled the pie man. Surely you remember me, Perpy. I'm Sour Grapes, your old partner in crime. And this is Dregs, my dear pet snake. Eek! shrieked the pie man. I'm terrified of snakes. There's only one thing I hate more, and that's berry talk. Don't worry, Perpy. With my help, you'll make strawberry shortcake look foolish, said Sour Grapes. When it comes to cheating, I can't be beaten. But I'm king of the bad guys, said the pie man. Then I'm the queen answered Sour Grapes. Now let's stop this silly argument and think of a really wicked plan. The two put their heads together and whispered. Dreg slithered around the tree looking for Cackle. Suddenly, Perpy and Sour Grapes jumped up. We've got it, quick! We must go to Strawberry's house to do some stealing. <laughs> when Strawberry Shortcake got to Sunflower Market, she saw a pretty little girl sitting all by herself. Hello, said Strawberry cheerily. Who are you? If you please, ma'am, I'm Angel Cake, thank you, said the little girl. Goodness, you are polite, said Strawberry. Do you have a pet for the parade? No, ma'am, I don't have. I'm sorry. Well, maybe we'll find one, said Strawberry. Oh, yes, ma'am, please, said Angel Cake. Hi, said Custard to a pretty skunk. You're new around here. Yes, I've been chased away from everywhere else. Folks don't seem to like me, but I'd like to stay here in Strawberry Land. Great, said Custard. What's your name? I'm not sure, but I think it's Eek. That's what people always say when they see me. Eek, a skunk. Are you going to be in the pet parade? Asked Custard. I'd like to be, 
said the skunk. But I don't have a kid. Good kids are hard to find, said Custard. Maybe one will come along for you. Gotta run now. See you later. The music began to play, and the kids and their pets came up on the stage. First came Huckleberry Pie and Pupcake. Pupcake yipped and barked and jumped up and down, his striped ears flying. Strawberry gave him eight points. Then Hippity Hop came Hopsalot, the creamy white rabbit. Isn't he fantastic, said Apricot, who liked big words. Yes, but Frappe Frog can jump higher, said Lemon Meringue, who came next. Who's next? asked Strawberry. Is anybody there? Oh, there you are. It's Apple Dumplin. Shyly, little Apple crept across the stage. And here comes Tea Time Turtle. All the pets were so very nice that Strawberry wondered to whom she'd give the prize. Her thoughts were interrupted by a voice saying, Hurry along there. It was Raspberry Tart and her little monkey, Rhubarb. Rhubarb did cartwheels, and everybody laughed. Now for the talent contest, said Strawberry when the parade was over. Wait, said a mailman with a long red nose. I have a package for Miss Strawberry Shortcake. Sign here, please. Oh, what a bother, groaned Strawberry. She heard a hum coming from the package, but she was in a hurry, so she quickly hid it in the corner. We'll open it later, Custard. Let's start the talent contest, please. <laughs> she fell for it said the mailman, who was really the purple pie man in disguise. hops made a carrot vanish. Then Tea Time Turtle did a disappearing act. Soon all the pets had shown off their tricks. Everybody clapped and cheered and had a good time. And now for the winner, said Strawberry Shortcake. Hey, just one minute, said the purple pie man. We've got two more pets here, said Sour Grapes. The names are Cackle and Dregs, the best of them all. Meow! Yowled Custard in an angry tone. Stop it, Custard, said Strawberry. Everybody must get a chance to win. Wiggling and cackling, the snake and the berry bird began to sing. Everybody stared in amazement as the two made beautiful music. Bravo! shouted the crowd. It sounds so familiar, whispered Strawberry to Custard. More, more! called Angel Cake, who loved music. Cackle and Dreg started to sing again, but something very funny happened. They were singing the same words over and over. Why, it sounds like my broken record player, said Strawberry. It is your record player, said the Purple Pie Man. You know you hit it in the corner. You used it to help us cheat. I don't believe it, please, gasped Angel Cake. Well, then take a look at this, said Sour Grapes. She dragged out the package that had been delivered. The tag on it said, Thank you for helping us cheat. Now Cackle and Dregs are sure to win. Signed, Perpy and Sour Grapes. Boo! Shame on you, Strawberry! How could you? shouted the other kids. Poor Strawberry. She was so upset by what the kids were saying that she burst into tears and ran away as fast as she could. Hey, Strawberry, don't run away, said the little skunk, who scampered after her. I know how you feel. Everybody is always blaming me for things I didn't do. But if you want to win, hold up your chin. Get back on the track and fight right back. Oh, skunk, you were right, said Strawberry, drying her tears. I didn't cheat, and I won't let that old pie man say I did. Let's march back together. The purple pie man was talking to the crowd, having a wonderful time. Strawberry always cheats, don't you know that? He said. Why, we all cheat, said Sour Grapes as Dreg slid around her feet. It feels so good to cheat. I did not cheat, said Strawberry, jumping on the stage. I'm hopping mad at you, and I'm going to fight back. Fight, said the purple pie man. I hope she doesn't mean fisty cuffs. I'm really scared of that. No, I mean berry talk. All day and all night until you say you are very, very bad, said Strawberry. No, no, anything but berry talk, yelled the pie man. Then admit you stole my record player before I become very angry, said Strawberry. Yes, yes, I admit it, said the pie man, but it was her idea. He pointed at sour grapes. 
Why, you horrible creature, take that! shrieked Sour Grapes, trying to hit the pie man with Dreg's tail. Eek! Let me out of here! wailed the pie man. Oh, I'm so glad. I knew in my heart that you didn't cheat. Thank you, said Angel Cake. I'm glad too, said Strawberry. But now I want to tell everybody how this little skunk helped me. She told me to fight back, and I won. Well, we vote her the winner. Hooray! But excuse, please, said Angel Cake. For a pet to win, it must have a child to love it. You're right, said Strawberry. If you please, said Angel Cake. I'll love this pet. Thank you. Angel Cake and the skunk hugged each other happily. Strawberry Shortcake said, Now for the prize, this beautiful scooter. And the winner is... Oh, but skunk, what is your name? How about, I know, how about souffle? Said Angel Cake. Yes, please. Thank you, said souffle skunk. Now that you have a name, climb aboard and lead the way to the picnic, said Strawberry Shortcake with a smile. Oh, Mr. Sun, said Strawberry as everybody sat down at the picnic party. Today has turned into the perfect place to be. Meow, said Custard. Why, Strawberry, don't you know that when you've got a friend to love you, every day's a perfect place to be, smiled the sun.